In the first quarter of 2020, I put the Sony FX9 camera to work in Thailand and Burma. I'm going to show you how this camera made it an epic journey. Hi, I'm JP Ferraro and this is Light Forum. On my epic journey, I accumulated 100 hours of use on the camera. I'm going to show you in depth seven great features of the FX9 and some other things. Feature one, the camera travels well. It breaks down into a carry-on size bag like this camera backpack. The grip remote, viewfinder, and mic holder come off easily. And with a tool, the top handle can come off. On my epic journey, I traveled from Denver to Chiang Mai, Thailand in late February as the coronavirus ramped up in Asia. The purpose of this trip was to create promotional videos for a nonprofit organization and get footage for some spec projects. My primary video project was for a medical training program named Barefoot Doctors. This training uses the book, Where There Is No Doctor, to empower people and communities in rural and underserved areas of Myanmar, also known as Burma. Feature two, you can shoot anywhere, anyway with this camera. The bag with all my stabilization and most of my clothes was delayed one day, so when I arrived in Chiang Mai, I had to improvise. I shot the first day a classroom footage handheld. A shoulder strap was good enough to get some usable footage. I just love the grip remote and it's a significant reason why this camera is so versatile and practical. You can get right in with the action in a tight spot. Go shoulder mounted without any added equipment. Change the handle for a high up shot. Get low shots or something unique. It changes angles so quickly. The ergonomics on this grip are so comfortable, even after shooting all day. And I love the easy access to controls, but you'll need to develop some touch memory with all these different buttons in one place. It can get a bit confusing, but each button has its own feel. So the number four button is pre-assigned to focus magnify, which is perfect here. There is the pre-assigned button five with the direct menu that navigates with this joystick. On the grip remote, the f-stop setting is pre-assigned to this wheel. The second day of my epic journey, my tripods arrived, so I was able to get cleaner moves with my sticks. I like to use the grip remote as a second handle on the tripod, like this. It gives added controls, stability, and speed of use. Then when it's time to go from sticks to handheld, you're ready to go. So I never had a problem with the cable getting pulled out. You just need to manage it from getting wrapped around the grip. There's some more features to the grip remote that I'll show you later. Number three, so many record formats. The native S Cinetone shooting mode is beautiful and can shoot an S Log 3, but decided to stick with S Cinetone I shot the Barefoot Doctor's footage in full frame 1920 at 30p because the final deliverable is web. So even in HD, the image quality and dynamic range is excellent. Of course, it makes editing much easier. The bit rate of the HD footage is 111 megabits per second at a 422 10-bit color sample. So for the reality show spec footage, I recorded in 4K on 120 gig cards. That's 44 minutes of record time at 30p. The 30p footage is at 300 megabits per second. So here we are shooting at a textile factory on Inle Lake in Burma. They make cloth woven from lotus silk. Here I use 30p and 60p. To use 60p, you gotta switch over to the S35 mode. This uses less of the 6K sensor, and it's similar to the scan area and number of pixels of an FS7 camera. So the image sensor's effective width and height numbers can be read in the metadata, and this gives us some insight to how the image is scanned in full frame versus in S35. These two clips give us some comparison of 30p in full frame versus 60p in S35. The ISO sensitivity and the master gain are the same on both. Both look good, and with 60p, you can get that nice slow-mo. Number four, the dynamic dual pace ISO. I assign the number six button here on the inside of the grip remote 
with the dual ISO switch. As Alistair Chapman explains, because there are two different base sensitivity modes on the FX9, there are numerous base ISOs. Depending on the shooting mode, all the base ISOs are zero dB of gain. Here's a great example of how the FX9's dual base ISO works so well. We had conducted some interviews inside this man's house. I got some B-roll inside the house on the high ISO. Then I went outside to get B-roll of the village and the landscape. It took longer to put the sandals back on than to adjust the camera for these contrasting shots. Shooting this bright exterior, I used the amazing variable ND filter. The ND filter goes in with just a button press and adjusts with the scrolling wheel. Then I step back again under the roof to grab this photo op with the grandparents and their granddaughter. I love how switching back and forth from low to high ISO is so easy and without any loss of image quality. This is the young woman's home village, but it has no schools. Thanks to a children's home ministry, she was able to get a basic education and now she's a college student. Feature five, the versatile viewfinder. Like the rest of the camera, this eyepiece and viewfinder adapts to you. It rotates easily to match the shooting angle. I leave mine with the eyepiece on, but not locked in. I can easily check the framing and the settings and then flip the loop back down to check focus. I left it unlocked like this during the entire epic journey and never had a problem with it disconnecting. You can rotate the viewfinder and mirror the image for doing selfie shooting. And you've also got assignable buttons on the side of the viewfinder. Number six, the auto features. So I'm gonna cover a couple of the auto features. First, auto focus. By now you've probably seen the test footage of the auto face detection with attractive women walking up to the FX9. Personally, I don't know any supermodels. So Wanzi and I did some tests with the face detection. See how the square locks onto my face? So when Wanzi comes into frame, it stays on me. And Wanzi has his hands up to his face, so even though I turn to a profile, the face detection stays on me. Once I put my head down and the full shape of Wanzi's face is detected, then the autofocus locks on him. In Burma, I did some autofocus tests. Here I'm in the border town of Tetelik. So the Barefoot Doctor's training was completed. All the students were at the coordinator's home before going their separate ways. Here I'm shooting at sunset. I'm using the Sony G Master 24 to 70 and the iris is at F7. Look how the autofocus locks on to those bougainvilleas over my head and adjusts as I tilt down to the couple with the baby stroller at about 30 feet away. Again at sunset, I'm here in the town of Nongshui, Burma. This is the main access point to Inlay Lake. So the flexible spot is set on narrow as I go from the water bottles to the stacks of chero roots and then follow the boat, I think the focus adjusts pretty good. The autofocus is just an amazing tool of the FX9. So using Sony lenses ensures quality autofocus. Not all other lenses will work and adapters definitely slow down the autofocus process. Another great auto feature is auto white balance, which I use probably half the time on my epic journey. In Thailand and Burma, they use a lot of fluorescent lights with odd color temperatures, so it can be difficult to preset the camera with the right white balance. This night shot in Chiang Mai is a great example of how the FX9 automatically processed the numerous colors and balanced them correctly. This is shot as the Sunday walking market was wrapping up. It's shot in 30p, full frame, and as Cinetone. I'm standing right there, about 15 feet up the wall of the Taipei gate. My shutter was set at 60, so there is some flicker, but in the shooting menu, the flicker reducer fixed that. Even with all these different color temperatures, the auto white balance really does a great job. So that candy apple red of the Songtao truck stays true. The pink and blue party lights inside those two vehicles just really pops. So here's another auto white balance test. This is where we have mixed natural and artificial light. In this clip on Sunday morning church, direct sun is blocked by the gray curtains on the east side and unobstructed on the west side. Overhead are the fluorescent tube lights. The skin tones and whites remain true even as I zoomed out and the brilliance of the colors in the student's traditional clothes 
really comes through. So the auto ND and auto exposure on the FX9 are also amazing. I didn't use them on this epic journey, but maybe on the next one. Feature seven, the audio. Even without the separate extender unit, the FX9 gives us a variety of audio options. There are the two built-in XLRs with line mic and phantom settings. The onboard mic is okay and can be adjusted manually depending on how you set the inputs. So you can add an adapter onto the hot shoe, which gives you actually a third input. Towards the end of the epic journey, I was working with this guy, Lopa. He runs a dormitory in Prao, Thailand that provides education opportunities for Akha children. We recorded interviews, archiving stories and details about the Akha culture. Lopa is on the lav and the subjects are under the road boom mic. Here he is interviewing his mom. It was amazing. <laughs> Thanks to the FX9's audio choices, I can get a nice mix or isolate those channels and post. I want to tell you about the most amazing moment of my epic journey. I'm with Lopa and we're doing interviews of these coffee growers at their farm in Northern Thailand. These guys produce really high quality beans. We're at about 1300 meters up. First we had to take a four wheel drive truck to get to the village and then to get to the coffee farm where we're doing the interviews meant going on motorcycle or walking another kilometer from the dirt road. It was just before sunset as we were doing the interviews with the growers. We sat in their farm near the summit of the mountain among the new coffee plants. The shadows lengthened through the pine trees and the sun lit up the valleys between the peaks. The temperature was just right and the air was still. So even though I was shooting, I looked around at the whole setting. It just felt so ethereal and it felt like a dream. I mean, it really was just a perfect moment. Thanks to the FX9, I had a lot of great shooting moments on my epic journey. Those are my top seven features and there are so many more on this camera. Please subscribe to see more reviews about Sony equipment and meet some amazing creative people.